the Admiral Broadway Review, brought to you by your Admiral dealer, the man to see for Admiral dual temp refrigerators, Admiral electric ranges, Admiral radios, phonographs, and magic mirror television. It's the Admiral Broadway Review, World Cruise. Broadway Review, this week with a happy blend of song, dance, and comedy, takes you on a world cruise. In the Hudson, there's the big Queen Mary, beside the Staten Island Ferry, and all the ships have got their flags on fur. Tycoons and famous dress designers are boarding great big ocean liners, starting on a cruise around the world. A luxury ship for us, there's an embargo. When we travel, we'll go with the cargo. We'll help the trader to Zanzibar. They say that Zanzibar is very far. So Zanzibar is far across the sea. Across the sea, it's nice to be. We'll catch a schooner to Trinidad. Go to Trinidad, it's quite the fad, it's quite the fad to pack your brush and roll and trot along the globe. We'll visit Greece with just one belief. If our boat should creep, it's a shame. We may not go with a lot of dough. We'll get there just the same. We'll hop a freighter, we'll board a boat. We'll go on air. Some remote little state or any place on the equator that's far. We'll We'll travel down the Nile upon a crocodile. We'll get a boat. We've got a visa. We'll drink Italian wine, and when we're feeling fine, we'll straighten out the Tower of Pisa. We'll go to Paris. We'll go to Prague. We'll go to London and lift the bar. We'll go to India, and when we're in Bombay, we'll spin the whirling dervishes the other way. We'll catch a steamer to Singapore. They say that Singapore is on a shore. It's on a shore that we'll explore in China or in a rich old man. It's on a shore.
crowded cluster is hallowed ground. This is probably the most romantic spot that you will find anywhere from Cairo to Johannesburg. In this tent that you're about to enter, you will find the son of the son of the son of the sheep. The real son of the son of the son of the sheep? The direct descendant and the heir to all the movie royalties. Oh, I can't believe it that I, Elizabeth Foster of Patterson, New Jersey, am standing in the middle of the Egyptian desert on the very desert where Rudolph Valentino stood. There's such a horror about the place. I can feel it. I can hear it. I can smell it. That's just the camels. You'll get used to that after a while. Where is he now? Where is the young sheep? Who knows? Off on some mysterious errand, no doubt. But he'll probably be back very soon. Well, do you think if I waited around, I could catch a glimpse of him? Well, you might try. Would you like to uh, wait alone? Oh, you're so understanding. Oh, the sheik of Araby. Tall, dark, passionate, as mysterious as the Egyptian night. As tender as the desert moon, riding swiftly over the dark sands into a secret romantic rendezvous. New Jersey was never like this. <laughs> oh, incense! How perfect! How eastern! <laughs> ah! Woman! <laughs> I want you. Yeah. Come. Come away from this airwick and into my arms. I didn't expect this. Ah, these many moons I have searched for you. Yes, you I have searched for you. Night and day. Day and night. Up the Nile. Down the Nile. You, you. I need you. Not the pillow. You, you, you. You! It is fate! Ah, fate! Now you can't escape me. No, because it was written in the stars long ago that you shall be mine. Mine, you hear? It is fate! I have waited for this moment for a long time. Ah, you shall be no one else's. Mine alone, you hear? Ah, now that I have you, we must not wait a second. It's not like this in the movie! <laughs> no, this is real. Nothing else matters. Ah, you are mine, you hear? Mine alone. I know what else shall have you. I shall kill us both. Ah! ah, you are everything to me. Everything you hear. No one else shall have you. I must have you, you hear? I want you. You must be mine alone. End these days of torture. Don't say it. Don't refuse me. Don't say you refuse me. Or else I'll go mad. Mad, you hear? Mad. I must have you. Where are you? There you are. I must have you here. I need you. I want you. I must have you. You hear? I need you. I, I... Will you join my pyramid club? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Phyllis Clare.
gentlemen, Mary McCarthy. Deep in the jungles of Africa, I've studied jungle lore. I've explored jungles in Africa that Frank Buck refused to explore. Ah, uh, where the lions and tigers roam, I've built a little
Ladies and gentlemen, Earl Wrightson. I won't kiss your hand, madame. Crazy for you, though I am. I'll never woo you on bended knee. No, madame, not me. We don't need that flowery fuss. No, sir, madame, not for us. My romance doesn't have to have a moon in the sky. My romance doesn't need a blue lagoon standing by. No month of May, no twinkling star, no hideaway, no soft guitar. My romance doesn't need a castle rising in Spain, nor a dance a constantly surprising refrain. Wide awake, I can make my most fantastic dreams come true. My romance doesn't need a thing but you. It's romantic Merely to be young On such a night as this Isn't it romantic Every note that's sung Is like a lover's kiss Sweet symbols in the moonlight Do you mean that I will fall in love For child? need a castle rising in Spain, nor a dance to a constantly surprising refrain. Wide awake, I can make my most fantastic dreams come true. My romance doesn't need Nothing but you.
documentary of life in America today on land, on sea, and in the air. A panorama of the faces and voices of the most unimportant people of our time. In the little town in Iowa, Mrs. Minnie Minipus was voted the best dressed woman of the year. 
Now, we thought it would be interesting to hear what Mrs. Minipus has to say about the ever-changing trends in styles and glamour. And so, here she is, Mrs. Marjorie Minipus, the best-dressed woman of the year. <laughs> Mrs. Minipus, I want you to know that it's a distinct pleasure and a privilege to have you with us today. As you know, there are many ladies in our audience, and I'm sure they're waiting to hear the secret of your sartorial perfection. <laughs> Party on style and naturally having investigated what consisted with well-dressed women for a number of years, there are any number of things I could say. But as every well-dressed woman has known and always will know, accessories is the main factor in dressing. If your accessories are a you will always Now, a very important item in dressing is the scarf. A woman's scarf should always be with the width. Just a touch of color to brighten the ensemble. Something very delicate like this. Something truly feminine. As they say in Portugal, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. And that brings us to woman's greatest problem and greatest joy, the hats. This season they're wearing all manner of chapeau, just as long as it's made of straw. The bonnet is still very popular. Also, the more sophisticated, over one eye type. <laughs> Which brings us to the question of dresses. According to the dictates of Paris, the latest thing in skirts is slits. A slit on this side and a slit on that side. But as you will notice, this skirt has 48 slits. <laughs> one for each state. That brings us to the question of bags. Now, some of my best friends agree that the bag should not only be lovely, but also functional. Now, this bag is made of genuine beetle hide, <laughs> lined with asbestos, which is ever so clever in case you carry loose matches around in your bag. Of course, I always carry a makeup case in my bag. And incidentally, for a really good makeup, a lipstick brush is truly essential. <laughs> One other little pointer, you should always have an aura of mysterious perfume around you. And if during the day it should sort of wear off, just carry an extra supply with you and give you a little touch here and there. <laughs> For the last and final pointer, we come to that delicate little piece of feminine frippery which has come back into style so terrifically this past season. The, uh, it's difficult to get, but well worth the effort. Ah, uh, there we are, the parasol. Now, if you will excuse me, I have an important date at the Zebra Room of the Mills Hotel. I'll be seeing you again sometime. Thank you, Imogene Coca. From down south in Corn Cob, Alabama, non entities in the news, takes pleasure in presenting the world's first female tobacco auctioneer. Miss Susie Nicotine. Well, Miss Nicotine, for a woman, you really are in a unique profession. Why don't you tell us something about tobacco auctioneering? Miss Nicotine, do you handle much tobacco? Well, I've been in business now for 20 years. I guess in that time I bought about 50,000 tons of tobacco. And that's a lot of tobacco. Did you manage to sell it all? Sell it? Heck no, I smoked it myself. Get away from me, boys, you bother me. <laughs> I see. Are you a chain smoker, Miss Nicotine? Never smoked a chain. <laughs> oh, it's like a good cigarette, though. I like to roll my own. Would you like one? Well, no, I don't think I'll join you. No, well, no, I like to roll my own because I like to know what's inside one of them, you know. It's a very important thing. You don't happen to have a match, do you, sir? Well, I don't think so. You well, do I that... think I've got one. Wait a minute, I'll look. You do that with real skill, Miss Nicotine. I... Must be broke. It never worked before. Miss <laughs> Nicotine, do you mean to say that you used up 50,000 tons of tobacco on uh, cigarettes alone? No, not in cigarettes alone. No, uh, I like a good cigar. Do you like cigars, sir? Uh, very good. I like bet. a good cigar after my dinner. Mm -hmm. You don't mind if I smoke, do you? No, certainly not. Go right ahead. You handle that with real skill, too. You know, Miss Nicotine, um, do you limit your smoking to... Uh, just uh, cigarettes and cigars, because that doesn't seem to have any effect on you whatsoever. No, I, uh, 
I uh, like a pipe now and then. Do you like a pipe? Yes, a pipe's very relaxing, I think. Well, I have one with me. Would you like a little? Uh, no, I'd just like to see what kind of a pipe you smoke. Oh, I, I, I don't imagine that a pipe uh, tastes very good after smoking a cigar, though. No, it doesn't. No, no. I see. Uh, <laughs> You know, uh, I think you must have a marvelous constitution to have smoked so many different things for such a long time without any ill effects. <laughs> Miss Nicotine, are you all right? Can I get you something? Is Smokey in here tonight? Don't nobody inhale? Thank you. <laughs> Mary McCarthy. Now, from Hot Kamali, Mexico, non-entities of the nose brings you the world's greatest bullfighter, Senor Alfredo Caliani, Divora Valre, Saluda, Salvera, Manana, Polono, Asante, and Chilada. Senor! Senor, is that, is that your real name? Si, senor, that's my real name. I also have a nickname. And what is it? Signor Alvarez, do you want to stick out? 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 Senor, how does it feel to be the greatest bullfighter in all the world? Nice. And, uh, Senor, tell us, how do you feel when you meet the bull? Scared. Oh, you must be joking. Tell us, what's the first thing that happens when you step into the arena? Ah, uh, when I step into the arena, ah, uh, I step in, everybody, the men, they throw their hats, the women, they throw flowers, and I bow. Then the bull, he come into the arena. The bull come into the arena, he smell me. I smell the bull. The bull, he smell me. I smell the bull. So the bull smell much better than me. <laughs> then, then the bull, he charged at me. He charged to the right, I stepped to the left. He charged to the left, I stepped to the right. I know this bull. He's got one weakness. If you kill him, he's dead. <laughs> then, then the bull come close. I grabbed the bull by the horns. I got the bull by the horns. I got the bull by the horns. I got the bull by the horns. The bull, he got me by the hands. <laughs> now I look at the bull. The bull, he look at me. I look at the bull. The bull, he look at me. The bull is much better looking than me. <laughs> then, I jump 30 feet in the air with the help of the bull. And when I come down, I bite the bull. The bull, he bite me. I bite the bull. The bull, he bite me. The bull may look better and smell better, but I taste better than the bull. <laughs> then the bull, he come closer, 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 closer. I pass him. I pass him this way. I pass him that way. He should never touch me. Ah. <laughs> Thank you, Sid Peter. Tune in again next week for more non editing in the news. At this point, Marge and I would like to take you on a very small voyage to the South Pacific. There, on a little island overlooking the Pacific, you will find a very small South Pacific maiden. That's Marge. She's very happy on her little island until one day along comes a reformer. That's me. And so this is the story of the reformer and the maiden. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, Sid Caesar. On a trip around the world, one naturally stops off in London. And while in London, I happened to see a play. It was called Zero Hour. As I traveled on, I saw the same play in Paris. And it was very interesting to notice the difference between the English and the French styles of acting. To show you what I mean, I should like to do the play first as it was done in London, and then as the same play was done in Paris. The first scene takes place at the general headquarters of the chief of staff. <clears throat> Gentlemen, attention. General Sir Archibald Woodbury. Hip hip roar. Hip hip roar. Hip hip roar. <coughs> Thank you very much, Audrey. Here's a giddy Audrey. Let me know for a Gentlemen at ease. Yes, indeed. Audrey, let me I, uh, uh, what was I going to say again? Uh, Oh, yes, the war. I saw it, isn't it? Uh, yes, the plan of attack would be as follows. First, the infantry will move in. Uh, oh, that's pretty jolly well good, eh? Well, yes. And then, then, here comes the artillery. Boom! Oh, it's all ripping, eh? It's all off in there, yeah. And then finally, the crushing blow of the Royal Air Force. Zoom! Oh, it's all ready again, you know? Go Gentlemen, the uh, zero hour will be precisely do 500. Uh, let's synchronize our watches. Uh, three, two, right there. Uh, gentlemen, I wish you all good luck. The next scene, the battlefield. <coughs> it's about time. <laughs> right. Well, gentlemen, this is it. Yes, it is, of course it is. <laughs> Shall we? It's a long way to Tipperary. It's a long way to hell. It's a long way to... <laughs> it's a long way to Tipperary. It's a <laughs> It's a long while to take the baby. Oh, there they are. Take that. Yeah. <laughs> and this too. It's a long while to take the baby. It's a long while to go. No, carry on, chaps. Carry on. Carry on. Never mind about me. Carry on. Carry on. No, no gun get in. No water. Carry on. Carry on, boys. Carry on. Lieutenant to General Orton, step forward. For very long thought, you'd be likely to get in order to make an order today. It was all in the case of a. Oh, can I get it? Oh, can I get it? First of all, I said it all in the case of a Victoria Cross. Good luck, my boy. Toast. It's a long voice, it's a long, and now the same play as was done in Paris. Attention! Red une pensée à tout gérer, de la capture et gilet bien fait rara. Général Henri Vespasseur et Grada. Hourra! 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 Merci, mon capitaine. Je vais pas sauver des gens, je vais mettre ma serre à la sur ma carrière. Je vais mettre ma serre à la bateau, 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 je c'est plus pensé à accélérer C'est plus pas trop rêve, je l'ai de Pierre Arrêtez les leurs plaines C'est plus pensé à rêve, je l'ai perdu rien là Hein Les enfants perdus, j'avais pas sauvé des en rêve, et le bon genre, oui, c'est partout, hein 5, 
Sank. Sunk. <rire> Monsieur, près des passés, vous déjà avec leur cœur. Je vais la faire près du gars. Bonjour. Dinexi, tu es bête de fil. Je vais porter un coup de loin. Oui.
Electric Rangers, radios, record players, and magic mirror television 